Hello everyone, welcome to episode 22 of this super awesome, amazing Usu <laughs> Let's Play series. In the last episode, I talked about reading and what I call trunking, which is grouping patterns into separate sections. And in this episode, I want to talk about finger control. It's something that's been requested by a couple people in the comments, so I want to cover finger control in this episode, show you guys some cool finger control maps, obviously, as usual and also talk a bit about you know the intricacies of finger control as well so yes before i get into the video i want to shout out as usual that i live stream every single day over at twitch.tv slash digital hypno so if you want to hang out with me live or just watch me play this game live anything like that i would highly highly recommend stopping by saying hello and bonus points if you tell me that you came from this let's play series i'll be very very happy to see you there so yes let's get started so first map that I have picked up for you guys. So, um, also before we get into this, as usual, um, if you have not watched the previous episodes, I highly recommend you watch my video named OCPHD first. That will be linked in the description or the little video suggesting thingy. I don't, I still don't know what it's called. I'll probably look it up one day so I can actually refer to it by its name, but the little card thingy that shows, um, that suggests the video. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> anyway, um, I go way, in depth into all the different skills in this game in that video so i recommend pausing this video now and checking out usu phd first if you have not seen that already but yes without any further ado first maps i have five maps picked out for this episode and finger control so by now hopefully you guys have all watched uh usu phd so um yes, as a bit of a review though finger control i would define as being able to start and stop patterns with either finger and i think Okay, so this is so OCPHD is, is somewhat structured in nature. Uh, this is kind of the complete opposite. I'm just gonna sort of thought dump whatever comes to mind as usual. <laughs> um, so I think finger control especially plays a role in like being able to stop patterns with either finger, like certain length bursts, especially. I find that some like people are naturally more comfortable with like a certain type of burst like odd numbered burst versus even number burst so like you know, triples and quints and anything that ends on the same finger that you started with um there's some people at, at least from what i understand people that are naturally comfortable with those kinds of patterns and then there's people that are kind of the opposite and they can only start patterns but they, they they always tap like an extra time, like triples, they always tap like one extra time, tap four times, something like that. And it takes conscious effort to fix that. Whereas, you know, some people are sort of the other way around. And I think, hmm, I would say training finger control. Okay, okay, I I'm going to talk about training finger control and then I'll try to talk about single tapping versus alternating as well. So training finger control, I would say comes down to constantly challenging yourself. Oh, uh oh, <laughs> um, awkward. Okay. Uh, constantly challenging yourself in like the ways that you tap with your fingers. I think just like not being in your comfort zone is, I mean, th this honestly applies to improving anything, but people I think like are so used to just like, just wanting to play however is most comfortable so that they can get good scores or something. And I think they sort of hide or they blind themselves to the fact that if you really want to improve in the long run, you're going to have to be like, it'll, you'll need to be performing worse for a while, but like in, in the right way, I guess, like, let's say I only single, single tap with my index, right? And I just cannot start patterns with my middle finger. If I was able to start patterns with my middle finger, I would be a lot better at this game finger control wise, right? Uh, in theory. Um, but in order to practice starting with my middle finger, that involves um, putting myself in those like very uncomfortable situations and playing a lot worse because I'm just starting everything with my middle finger, even though it's not very comfortable. So um, yes, I think that honestly tends to scare a lot of people away from actually getting better at, um, I mean, maybe just Osu, but, but really things in general. But I, I think that that's, it feels a little off topic, but hopefully that makes sense. Um, Oh, okay, this map, this map. Um, there's there's something in this map. Let me, let me show you guys. So, uh, kind of a little off topic. Uh, not really, actually. It's somewhat related to finger control. <laughs> oh, I promise. 
Um, okay, you, you know patterns like these? Uh, wait, actually, uh, wait, I was thinking of another map that, that I looked at. Okay, but yes, anyway, patterns like these, um, where there's like two nodes after a slider, people refer to these as doubles. Uh, it's not actually a double. Uh, actually, there's a better map that I have picked out for this episode that I will I'll use that map to show you guys. Um, maybe this one. This is going a little out of order from what I had expected, but uh, yes. Okay, look at this map. Look at this map. So um, let, me, let me slow it down a little. So you see it's like slider and then two notes, two circles. It is not a double, okay? You don't really call it a double. You shouldn't play it like a double. Um, what this actually is, if I zoom into the optic timeline, um, so the basically this red line here is, is very, very small. If you're on low quality video, you might not be able to see it. But basically, this right here, think of it as the first note of a triple, uh, rhythm-wise. So this is basically just an extended first note of the triple. And then you just tap two and three as if you know they were the second and third notes of a triple. So um, I don't know if there's really a name for this. Usually, when I talk about these patterns, I just call it a triple where the first note is actually the end of a slider or something like that, or like the first note is replaced with the slider end. Very long way to refer to this kind of pattern. I don't know if there's really a name for it. Um, we can make one up though, but that's up to you guys. Maybe you could leave a comment and suggest a decent name for it, this kind of pattern. But um, yes, anyway, that that is one thing that I wanted to point out. I know people are like, oh, the the double single tap patterns in, in this map are so tricky, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it, it is not actually a double. Um, I mean, technically, you can make that argument, but it, it is also in the same vein. Um, this go is similar, I think, to something I mentioned in a previous episode where if you let go of this slider with one finger and then try to tap the next note with the same finger, like if you were single tapping, for example, then you might actually let go of the slider too early. Or you run that risk, and you might end up dropping the slider end. So um, is that is something I wanted to point out. Let's actually let's just play this map now. You know, since I'm here, let me just show you guys. <laughs> and you can watch my key overlay as well as usual and sort of see what I'm talking about. Like, uh, yeah, okay, anyway, anyway. I, I think hopefully most of you guys get the idea. But yes, okay, so on the topic of single tapping and alternating. Um, oh, actually, oh man, cut streams too. Okay, so this, this map is full of cut streams. This is very good, like, sort of introductory cut stream type map. Uh, and then this map is mapped by someone named Keithy Gster. It's very high quality finger control maps like these, challenge maps. Um, very good, but anyway. Um, there, there's like a million directions that I feel like I could go in right now. Um, okay, so let's just talk about cut streams since they're all over this map. So I mentioned in the last episode something called chunking. And uh, if you haven't seen that episode, highly recommend watching that one first. But or, yeah, uh, regarding chunking. But basically, um, when you play cut streams, I think that sort of three-step process of, especially I think step three, like really landing like the last note of a cut and then the start of the next cut slash chunk, basically, um, helps a lot to sort of demystify how to process cut streams and I guess read them more consistently. Um, also on the topic of finger control, um, actually, okay, so finger control ties very closely to um, different the different alternating styles, I would say. And I mentioned those in episode six and I think also episode 20 when I talked about alternating maps, but um, yes, definitely check out the start of episode six where I talked about different alternating styles. So I think for like finger control maps like these, or like cut streams especially, I think tap stream alting is really helpful for like aiming things properly. And I think I, I've mentioned before that Flying Tuna, I, I keep using Flying Tuna as an example for this, but I think he is just really, really, like he's just a very good example of someone who is very comfortable with tap stream alting. And for that reason, he's able to play these like really crazy aim control type cut stream weird maps very well because um, yeah, it, it gives you that deliberateness that is needed to have finger control, right? But also aim control to sort of focus on each individual note and aiming things properly, I would say. But it's the first solid map, map by KTG sir. Okay, anyway, anyway, let's, let's go. Okay, so this map, okay, this map is crazy. Th those of you who are somewhat rhythmically 
inclined. <laughs> uh, this song is in one fifth, one fifth. I don't remember the time signature, but the the timing divisor is one fifth. And if you've been following my other episodes, I've mentioned things like one third, one fourth, uh, one two, one six. I have not mentioned one fifth and that because it's not really a thing, um, but it is a thing in in this map, and that 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 is just crazy. This map is insane. <laughs> um, the way you can think of it basically is um. In the amount of time that there would usually be four notes at 160 BPM, there's instead five notes. That's basically what that means. Um, yes, anyway, this is also a very good, tricky, complicated finger control map. Um, and finger control map, but to be honest, like every skill in this game sort of ties together in every map that you play, I feel like. So, I mean, you can, you can argue as it's just a rhythm sense map, it's just a reading map, or blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> um, Anyway, okay, I wanted to mention single tapping versus alternating. Um, I think I've sort of touched on it in other episodes, but oh man, can I really sight read this and talk at the same time? I, you know, what? I'm, I'm just going to try. <laughs> so yeah, people, I think sometimes say that, okay, it's very strange because some people argue that alternating like cuts the speed in half, but then also people argue that like single tapping reduces a lot of the finger control that's necessary for s certain kinds of maps. Oh! Okay, yeah. That, I deserve that one. You know what? I don't... It's, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, oh! Okay, yeah, I... Okay, these bursts in this map are uh, like one note longer than you might expect just because of the weird time signature. Very good map though, good practice, but <laughs> anyway, um, I think my understanding is that single tapping, okay, so if you mainly single tap, like sure some patterns require less like raw finger control, because you don't really need to be as good at starting patterns with your other finger if you don't do it anyway, but I would say like because your playstyle like doesn't require as much finger control, you also don't really have as much finger control, so on maps that are very tricky, or in those like rare situations where there's just a pattern that is very like it'll throw you off if you try single tapping the whole thing, then in in those situations you might not have the finger control to like play it properly, I guess, um, or to alternate it. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm somewhat trying to mention like very niche things about finger control in this episode because, um, well, probably because I, I mentioned a lot of the basics in OC PhD, but. Uh, okay, 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 goodbye. Goodbye, A rank. <laughs> uh, very cool map, though. But, yes, anyway, okay, two more maps. Um, actually, is this even gonna. Yeah, okay, it's fine, it's all good. Yeah, two more maps. Um, yes, okay, map number is also by Kitty Gster, map number four. Uh, this is also, I think, pretty cut streamy. I think it's somewhat similar to the other KTG Star map that I showed in this episode. Uh, okay, look at this. Look at this. Okay, so triples. Uh, there. Okay, th there are three main ways to play repeated triples. Either you start them all with key one, you start them all with key two, or you fully alternate them. It's basically three different combinations. Um, if you really want to master finger control, uh, I think if there's one takeaway from this video, then it's this. Like, if you really want to master finger control, you should constantly be tapping in ways that are uncomfortable for you, and do that until it feels more natural to start patterns in that certain way. So, of the three ways that you could play repeated triples, for example, is starting with key one, starting with key two, or full alting. Whatever is least comfortable for you, just keep doing it until it is more comfortable, right? And then, once you get more comfortable with that, then find some other tapping style that's uncomfortable for you. Uh, for me personally, you guys, I, I've, I'm sure I've, I've mentioned this a couple times, but personally, when I started playing this game, I primarily could really only start patterns with my index finger, and I would just single tap everything with my middle uh, with my index. And uh, nowadays, after many years of trying for that to not be the case and practicing starting patterns with my other finger, um, I would say it's gotten a lot better. I still have a tendency towards my index finger, but it's at least to the point where if I need to start a pattern with my other finger, I won't necessarily get thrown off by it. So, hey, that's good, at least. And 
it all comes down to just challenging yourself and putting yourself in like I almost say like putting yourself in awkward situations. Uh, I, I feel like that's a bit of an extreme way to word it because uh, it's just a little circle game, but <laughs> just playing maps that you typically do and um, switching up the way that you tap. I, I've also heard, okay, so I've heard some people ask for like map suggestions for maps that are like that you can practice tapping with your other finger or starting patterns with your other finger. And the way that I see it, like if we just think about what finger control really is, it's like just um, like if something is challenging your finger control, it means you're not comfortable starting or stopping, like you know, with either finger on that map. And honestly, oh shoot, what what happened to my voice? <laughs> honestly, um, just the fact that you are starting patterns with your other finger turns any map into a finger control map. Oh, what did I miss? Oh my god. Okay, yeah, it's fine, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, let's say so as someone who was only comfortable starting patterns with my index finger Any map that I played if I was trying to start patterns with my other finger that map is automatically finger control map so What I used to do is I would just play like very simple um, Simple rhythm nice songs. Actually, I'll show you one map in particular um, Fauna by Suki Nathan um, I used to play this map and I would play it to warm up and I would single tap and start all the patterns with my index finger and then like 20 to 30 notes in I would switch to starting everything with my middle finger and single tapping with my middle finger and basically by the end of the map I would have the same amount of key taps on both fingers but basically I would just it would be by switching the finger that I was single tapping with through the map and I think that was actually a pretty good way to focus on um finger control and like really feel out the difference between the like starting patterns with like how how comfortable I feel starting patterns with my index finger and then what exactly is missing when I tap with my middle finger and see sort of comparing those side by side I mean this map is five minutes it's um good song first of all but very simple high quality map is this, this is um for review I guess this is what you would call a conventional map as well Rhythm is very conventional, patterns are pretty comfortable, um, very clean mapping, very high quality map. Um, but yes, I'll have this map linked in the description. Um, there's one other finger control emphasis map that I want to show you guys, but um, yes, and I think you'll notice throughout all these maps that I think maps that necessarily challenge finger control, I think they're characterized by a lot of like different length bursts rather than just like the same throughout the entire map um or i think cut streams also are characteristic of finger control and it's not often discussed but i do think it's because of the sort of like niche skill set of like being able to switch between different alternating styles like tap alting stream alting and tap stream alting um i did not expect for that to be such a prevalent topic in so many of these episodes but the more I think about it, I mean, it's a relatively... Actually, I mean, like, to put it into perspective, I sort of coined those terms while I was recording the episode for episode 6. I just I just made up the terms because I was like, nobody talks about this stuff. It needs a name, like all these different types of alternating. But yes. Um, also, hmm. okay, in case you guys are wondering, okay, so this map in particular right now, I would say... I'm doing like a combination. I'm doing tap stream alting that's closer to stream alting, but I'm still, there's still that deliberateness I think that's there right now. Like, like uh, as I'm playing this map right now. So, in case you guys are wondering. Yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah, so th this map, for example, um, actually, this was a custom map for OSU World Cup last year, 2020. Oh, oh hey, hey guys, it's the year is 2021, and 2020 was only one year ago. Okay, I had this random thought earlier. I think it was yesterday, but like, just the fact that we can say that 2020 was in the past, like, that's how we know that we're living in the future, like, for real. Like, you think the year 2020 and you're like, oh yeah, that already happened. It's like, okay, <laughs> now, now what? Because we're just so far into the future that, like, we're just unfazed. Oh, I cannot play this map. Oh, okay, maybe I should start paying attention a little more. Oh, uh, actually, maybe not. <laughs> um, 
But yes, hopefully throughout this video and series so far, I guess, I've shed some light on some of the more under-discussed aspects of finger control slash, I guess, improvement in this game in general. But yeah, um, I do want to mention like, okay, I'm, I'm sure I've mentioned this in a previous episode, but starting patterns with your other finger, people, okay, no, um, I guess the advantages of like only ever single tapping versus only ever alternating. Um, there might be some patterns that are like just very unnatural to start everything with the same finger. Um, or maybe just like the song is too fast and it's, it's just unreasonable to start everything with the same finger. There might be maps like those that you run into where if you're only ever comfortable starting patterns with the same finger, then you might run into issues on those maps. But on the other hand, if you're very, very comfortable with alternating and switching between your fingers, especially if you're able to do all three of the different types of alternating, um, I mean, okay, tap alting is basically single tapping, effectively, except you're using both of your fingers. And um, yeah, okay, actually, okay, let's break it down this way. So tap alting is um, so, uh, is something that you can do with both fingers. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. Uh, tap alting is something you can do with both fingers, or you can just use one finger. It's the same motion. But tap stream alting and stream alting, you have to use both fingers. So um, on patterns that involve tap stream alting or stream alting, already being comfortable with switching between both of your fingers is going to put you at a pretty big advantage, I would say. Especially for like really weird maps like this one that I'm playing, where like I, I don't even know. I don't even know what's happening. Oh, OK, OK. Ninja pause to, to not submit. I, I don't have score. Maybe I should pick maps that I actually have scores on, so I don't have to quit out if I don't get a full combo. Um, but <clears throat> that is that is just um, my my play style. So my style, no change. <laughs> um, but yes, hopefully this sheds some light on a unique perspective involving finger control. Uh, thanks to everyone who has been uh, suggesting topics for these episodes. By the way, I've been taking note of all of them, and I've been dumping them into a blank Discord channel so that I can refer back to them and give credit where credit is due. If you suggested a unique um, topic for an episode, I'll be sure to go back and credit you and, and uh, yeah, all that good stuff. But anyway, uh, thank you for, uh, especially for making it all the way to the end of this episode. Um, but if you're watching in the future, I would highly recommend checking out my channel and watching my future episodes because I upload these every single day. And also, like I mentioned earlier, definitely check out my Twitch live streams as well, where I live stream every single day as well. So uh, yes, but with that, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.